Hello everyone, I'm Kyle the Completionist, and welcome to my very first playthrough of one of the greatest RPG games ever made, Mass Effect. So, welcome to the epic title screen for this game, and starting out right here, I think this scene right, I think this scene is a really good example of the beauty and ambience that Mass Effect has. Just this image of the Earth, and the Moon, and the stars above, and this music that's playing right here. This is the famous Vigil theme which is actually played throughout the entire series. And... I just... This is one of my favorite games, and... I, I really love it for the story, and... the awesome gameplay mechanics that it has. I... So I... I'm really happy that this is the first game I'm playing for my channel, so... Let's get started. so starting out in the main menu you can see these are images of the major characters in the game there's Rex right there and then there's Tally most of you probably know who these guys are but if you don't well find out soon enough and I'm just I'm gonna let Psy go through all these images because I think they're cool and, and I just like to talk about how I I definitely think that this the first Mass Effect is the best out of the trilogy because I mean you can really tell that Bioware gave it their all when they made this game. They clearly wanted the players to you know fall in love with the characters and the the story and universe that they created they I think the story in this game is a lot of depth and soul to it that unfortunately I think the, the second and third games kind of lack a bit and because I mean I just don't think the, the stories of the future games or ever is well written as this one was and I think it's a shame that happened. I'm not saying I don't like Mass Effect 2 and 3, but I don't think they were as... They just... A lot of the stuff that made the first Mass Effect so good is what... They took it out of the sequel games. And I just think that's really unfortunate. Like the RPG aspects, for example. In this game, you have... A, like the RPG elements are much more pronounced and in Mass Effect 2 and 3 they they take a lot of those important elements out like your the skills and abilities that your character can use in battle I they were simplified in Mass Effect 2 and 3 and also the the impact of the origin story you can choose was also reduced in the sequel games where it, in this game it has a lot more an impact. Anyway, so it's Rex again. Right, so start new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Classified. Top secret. <laughs> I'm just having some fun. Okay, so connect to database. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. 
Okay, so here you have the option to choose which, how to design the game's main character. You can either choose the default identity here, which, if you just want to get into the game immediately, it starts you off with a pre-chosen uh, background story and uh, military specialization and pretty much everything. But I'm not going to do that though, and I, pr I prefer to customize my character. And the select existing ID option is there if you've already played the game previously and had won. For example, I play through the veteran difficulty in order to unlock the hardcore difficulty, so I already have a character who has completed the game, and if I wanted to, I could start the game with that same character again, and I could, like, he would, he would start out at level 50, which is the level he was at when I completed the game, and I'm not, I would imagine that, I would imagine that would make the game quite easy, although it's also possible they make the enemies more tough if you do, if you choose that option. Uh, I'm not gonna do that though, I'm just gonna start out with a completely new character, so I would choose the enter new ID option. Here you choose either to be a man or a woman. Both the male and female shepherds are fully voice acted, with Mark Mir voice acting the male shepherd and Jennifer Hale voice acting the female shepherd. So I I think they're both great voice actors in their own right, although I feel like the male shepherd's voice can sound a little awkward at times, especially in the first game. Although it's probably the same for the female shepherd. Because in this game I think Bioware was sort of experimenting with the idea of a fully voiced protagonist, so they didn't really I don't think they quite wrote their lines all that well because it was sort of an experiment, I guess. Anyway, I, I will be playing as a man, and I will be... Again, I want to fully customize my character, so I would choose this top option right here. Please log in to access your profile. Right here you can choose Shepard's first name. It really doesn't matter because no one in the game ever calls him by his first name, they just call him Shepard, which I always thought was bizarre, although it's understandable. Obviously they can't call him by any first name the player chooses, but it would be really cool if they could do that, if and one day get the technology to, I don't know, make it so they could say any word that the player chooses, I don't know. Anyway, so, except... Warning, data corruption detected. Uh-oh, that can't be good. Please reconstruct profile. I always wonder what the point of that scene was, that weird error scene. I mean, it's not a real error, it's just something they put into the, the thing. Like, it's... I always wondered if it had some weird hidden significance or... I don't know, just that was a very interesting detail. So, reconstruct profile. Confirm pre-service history. Okay, so here you choose Shepard's origin story. His, like what he went through when he was a child, and the reason for why he joined the military. And I'll read each of these out. So, Spacer. Both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. And then, colonist. You were born and raised on Mindwar, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided Mindwar, slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by a passing alliance patrol, and you enlisted with the military a few years later. And finally, Earthborn. You were an orphan, raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering Earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gains by enlisting with the Alliance military, 
when you turned 18. Okay, so each of these origin stories has an effect on some of the side missions Shepard can take in the game, and it also has an effect on, like, how people... Like, how people treat Shepard, I guess. I mean, it's not like, uh... I mean, I, it doesn't have a dramatic effect on how the on how the characters treat Shepard, but it, like it does affect how they when they talk about his backstory, and also each of these origins has an effect on Shepard's story morality score, because in this game there is a morality system similar to the Knights of the Old Republic or the Fable games, where the good path is the Paragon route, and the evil path is referred to as the Renegade route. So, a Paragon Shepherd would be more nice and compassionate to people, where a Renegade Shepherd is more cruel and ruthless. And in the spacer back, the spacer background gives you more Paragon points, which makes sense because. In this backstory, Shepard had a loving family when he was a child and didn't suffer any trauma, so it would make sense that he would grow up to be a, you know, all around a nicer guy. And in the Earthborn origin, gives you, the Earthborn gives you more renegade points, which also makes sense because in this origin story, Shepard didn't have a family and he was raised on the streets and. Apparently he used to be a violent gangster, which is interesting. They'd have to call him Gangster Shepherd, I guess. So yeah, it makes, it makes sense he'd be more messed up in the head as a result. And the colonist origin is a... it's sort of the middle path. If you choose this origin, you gain equal amounts of both Paragon and Renegade. Which also makes sense, because in this origin story, Shepard did have a loving family. But when he was a teenager, these scumbag slavers murdered them all. So it would make sense that he sort of have, have a combination of both good and bad in him. So as to which, as to my personal preference, I actually believe that both the Paragon and Renegade paths have a sort of an important role in Shepard's personality because Shepard is supposed to be this this badass military commando who's going to single-handedly save the galaxy and you know when you're when you're a military commander you have to you have to realize there's a you have to maintain an important balance between both compassion and ruthlessness and you know, kindness and cruelty because you know even though you should you should do everything you can to protect the innocent and care for your fellow soldiers you also need to be willing to make hard choices and you know be ruthless when the situation requires it because war is an ugly business so I will actually be choosing the colonist origin here confirm psychological profile Okay, so this is an expansion of the origin story. Here you choose what happened to Shepard when he was in the military and what he had to go through to become, you know, as battle-hardened and, you know, as skilled of a soldier as he is. So, I'll read each of these out. So, Soul Survivor. During your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you alone are left to tell the tale. And next is the war hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism have earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. And finally, Ruthless. Throughout your military career, you have held fast to one basic rule.
get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers weary of you. But when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. Okay, so obviously the ruthless is the renegade option, and war hero is the paragon option. And like the colonist, the sole survivor is the middle option. So, someone who chose both the spacer and war hero would start out with maximum paragon points, and someone who's both an earthborn and ruthless would gain maximum starting renegade points. And again, if you choose both the colonist and the sole survivor, you start out with equal amounts of both. And you can also choose any given combination, like it could be a spacer, but also be ruthless, or you could be earthborn, but also be a war hero, or any of those, and also a sole survivor, you get what I'm saying. So, again, I, I prefer to sort of balance out the Paragon and Renegade, so I will be choosing the sole survivor origin here. Confirm military specialization. Okay, so the final big decision you have to make is what Shepard's military specialization is. Like his class, basically. Like, you know. Like in the Elder Scrolls games, you chose your character's class, which determined their skills and abilities. It's pretty much the same here. So, the soldier is sort of your standard warrior class, you get like, you gain access to every kind of gun specialization, you, you can use every kind of weapon in the game to your advantage, you know, to their maximum damage and effect, and you also gain a, a, a cool ability called immunity, which allows you to take a lot of damage without dying, which on the higher difficulties is probably a must. Admittedly, though, the soldier is kind of the most boring class because you don't gain as many special attacks and abilities as the other classes do. So, and then Engineer is sort of your... the support class in the game where you... most of your abilities revolve around disabling your, enemy, your enemy's shields or weapons, like debuff attacks, and... Also hacking into computers or repairing objects to bypass obstacles or gain, you know, weapons and other items that might have been inaccessible otherwise. And, but my favorite class out of all of them is the Adept. Now the Adept is basically the mage of the Mass Effect universe. The Adept, like, has the ability to telekinetically lift enemies and slam them against walls or summon a micro singularity to send them all flying into the air it's just it's really cool and even though the only weapon you can use is the pistol it's really all you need because your add up your special attacks are devastating against your enemies and also the pistol is a really good gun in this game anyway so now these final classes, the Infiltrator, Sentinel, and Vanguard, are basically combinations of the first three. For the most part, the Infiltrator gains certain abilities from the Engineer class. Not all of them, but whereas the Engineer can only use a pistol as a weapon, the Infiltrator can use both pistols and sniper rifles. And they can also use medium armor, I'm not sure if... Yeah, I'm not, I don't think engineers can use medium armor. So I guess infiltrators can use more advanced armor for damage for damage protection. And the Sentinel is, in my opinion, the worst class in the game because... Well, the idea is it combines the Engineer and the Adept, but... You don't gain any weapon specialization, so you can't use any weapon in the game to its full effectiveness and as I said you only gain some abilities from both the engineer and the adept. Well the adept can use the singularity attack which is in my opinion the strongest attack in the entire game but sentinels can't use singularity. 
So, you know, the trade-off for not being able to use any gun really isn't much. And finally, the Vanguard combines the soldier with the adept. So you can use pistols and shotguns. Again, you can't use all of the abilities from the adept tree, but you can... I don't know, I guess maybe, I think maybe you gain the immunity ability, I'm not sure, actually. And, and, and shotguns really aren't all that great anyway, because... In this, a lot of the enemies in this game have instant kill attacks, so you need to keep your distance from them and stay in cover. But shotguns are only good up close, so... I suppose it would be good if the enemy rushes you, but... Ultimately, really, the only gun you need is the pistol if you know what you're doing. So for that reason, I'm gonna go with the Adept. Because the Adept kicks ass. What's this? Bonus talent. Oh, that can't be right. Confirm I... military specialization. Since when did I get a bonus talent? I don't... That's new. Hmm. First aid, I guess? Confirm I facial identification. I'm not sure why that was there. That wasn't there, though. Last time I went through this. Interesting. Oh, this game's full of surprises, I guess. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I've played through the game with multiple characters or something. I don't know. Anyway, so... The final big decision you can make here is you can either... Change Shepard's appearance, or... Like, you can alter what he looks like. You can change his eyes, his... Nose, ears, mouth, hair. You can make him look like a completely different person than he looks like right now. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm just going to use the default appearance because... Because, I mean, Shepard already has a voice in this game. I mean, he's not really a mute protagonist that you can completely roleplay as. And I've... He's a character in his own right, and I've sort of learned to associate his voice this face that he has right here. So for me, it would, it would just be kind of weird to change his appearance. I know not everyone feels that way, but that's just how I prefer it, so I'm just going to use the default appearance. Profile reconstruction complete. Okay, so... Accept. And confirm. Identification confirmed. Alright, so let's begin. Well, what about Shepard? He grew up in the colonies. He knows how tough life can be out there. His parents were killed when slavers attacked Mindwar. He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. He could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. Most 
epic intro in gaming history. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emissions sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Okay, so this is the first dialogue option you can choose. And the way the conversation system in this game works is you get this... Whenever it's Shepard... Whenever, whenever you choose what Shepard says, you get this... What's called a dialogue wheel option. And the... The idea is you pick a, a phrase or word from here, and then Shepard will say something that is, for the most part, in line with what you chose. The topmost dialogue options tend to be the more polite and nice dialogue options, you know, the Paragon dialogue options, and the bottommost options are the more rude and aggressive ones, so the Renegade options, and the, the middle options are the neutral you know, neither Paragon nor Renegade. Now, it's important to try and gain as many Paragon and Renegade points in this game as possible, and you gain these points by choosing either Paragon or Renegade dialogue options. Usually you gain about like two or like two points for each dialogue choice you make. And it's important to gain as many points as possible because they allow you to unlock persuasive abilities that allow you to convince people to help you during missions later on in the game. I'll show you guys what I mean later. So, I'm not really going to pick the neutral options all that often, unless if it's something, unless if it's a situation where I don't agree with either the Paragon or Renegade options, which may happen from time to time. Anyway, so, for now I'll pick the Renegade option. So, cut the chatter. That's enough. Your soldiers, act like it. Sorry, Commander. Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Hmm. Is he upset? He sounds angry. Something must have gone wrong with the mission. <laughs> Captain always sounds like that when he's talking to me. Can't possibly imagine why. <laughs> Poor Joker. Yeah, not many people like him very much because he's... Well, he can be really funny sometimes, but he's most of the time he's very annoying. The only reason people really put up with him is because he's a very good pilot. So as you saw on that lower right screen before it faded, there was... It showed that I got two Renegade points for that first dialogue choice I made. And... Excuse me. And... You notice I did not gain two Paragon points for that second option, so... Not every dialogue choice you make necessarily will give you points, but it's still important to choose as many upper or lower options on the dialogue wheel as you can for the sake of maximizing your score. So let me show you real quick. So you choose the squad option here in the start menu and you can, you see these are all of Shepard's skills and abilities. These green squares are skills you already have and like each skill has like more advanced levels that you can unlock as you invest in more points in that particular skill so right now I have three points I haven't spent yet and right here these are paragon this is the paragon meter and the renegade meter right here and as Shepard earns more points these meters begin to fill out and as they 
as you gain more points, more of the skill slots from the Intimidate and Charm skills become unlocked. Whereas most of these other skills, more of these squares become unlocked as you level up, uh, these two skills right here are specifically tied to your Renegade and Paragon meters. So Charm is the Paragon related persuas Persuade skill that, you know, we, I guess you, you know, convince people to help you and the Intimidate option is the Renegade Persuasion skill where you, you know, frighten them into helping you, you know, coerce them. And uh, so that's really how it works. And there are like the level cap in this game, I believe, is 50. And you gain three points for the first, I think, it was like 20 or 25 levels. And then the last 25 levels is the you gain two points per level or something. So there's a ton of, you know, points you, you can get. And so, I think it's worth investing in these persuasion options because they, it's a, it, help, it helps make the story more interesting when you persuade people to help you instead of, I mean, you don't have to persuade people to help you in certain situations in order to get through the game, but it's still more interesting, in my opinion. I think the dialogue and story in this game are one of its key elements, so I will be investing in the persuasion skills and these other options in the star menu are the map which gives you a 2d representation of the area you're in and the general is just gives you your the, like the objectives you can look at if you're lost the codex is an encyclopedia on all of the lore of the mass effect universe as you proceed through the game you'll gain more codex entries so if you want to learn everything there is to know about the Mass Effect universe, you would read these. I'm not going to read all of them though, it would take way too long. Uh, the equipment option is where you can give Shepard different weapons or armor or apply upgrades to make him stronger in combat. And there's the save and load options. Settings is where you... Yeah, just settings I showed you earlier if you want to change them. And let me save it right here. Alright, so let's see what these guys have to say. In order to interact with a with someone or anything really, you just walk up to the person and you push the action button to talk to them. The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. Okay. What about you, Caden? You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. No, I don't. Alright, so... Welcome to the Normandy SR-1. Which is the main ship of the game. From here, you'll... Later on, you have the ability to... And we're getting dragged, right along with him. Relax, Presley. You're gonna give yourself an ulcer. You're going to give yourself an ulcer? Well, that's not a very nice thing to say. Especially to an old guy like Presley here. Alright, sorry about that. I accidentally triggered that dialogue there. Anyway, I was, as I was saying, this is the main ship in the game where later on when you become the captain of this ship, you can visit all the different planets and locations from here. So this is sort of the, the hub, I guess you would call that. So, let's talk to this guy first. Talk to Presley. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? I heard you arguing. Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. It didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. Okay, so a quick word of advice here. The leftmost dialogue options here tend to be the more investigative. For example, if you want to find out more information on something, you would choose this option. 
And if you just want to get to the end of a conversation as quickly as possible, you would choose one of these rightmost options here. So, since I do believe that dialogue is a huge part of this game, and you know the story is one of the the game's strongest aspects, I will be trying to get as much dialogue as possible. So I will choose the leftmost option here most of the time. So, what do you mean? You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? It doesn't add up. Okay, so the investigate option here, you'll get these in most conversations. It gives you the ability to ask the character questions on certain topics related to the conversation. So for example here, you could ask him about the stealth systems on the ship, or the captain, or that Turian Spectre, that he's the weird alien we saw earlier. So let's ask him about the stealth systems first. What do you know about the stealth systems? I just know it masks our location from scans and sensors, cutting edge technology. The Normandy's the only ship with this prototype drive. But why are we fully staffed? A skeleton crew would be cheaper, less chance of security leaks too. Plus there's Nihilus. It's pretty obvious this shakedown run is just a cover. A cover? For what? Damned if I know, Commander. We're out here on false pretenses. I'm not a fan of being left in the dark. Hmm. Who is? Okay, so... The Captain. Do you have a problem with the Captain? No, sir. But I can't figure out what he's doing here. Captain Anderson is one of the most decorated Special Forces officers in the service. If he melted down all his medals, he could make a life-size statue of himself. You don't send a soldier like that on a do-nothing mission. He's treating this shakedown run too seriously. Something big is going on. All right. Turian Spectre. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. Hmm. Plus, he's a Spectre. Nihilus is no ordinary Turian. You've got that right, Commander. We're an Alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the Captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. And they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Heavy action, eh? Well, Shepard just loves heavy action. I'll look into it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. Mm-hmm. See you, Preston. I grew up on Eden Prime, Doc. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. Let's see who these guys are. So first we have Dr. Chackwass. Uh, Chakewase. Chackwaz. Okay, okay, okay. Chakwas, Chakwas. Her name is it's, it's pronounced Chakwas. And then we have Corporal Jenkins. Leroy Jenkins. Oh god. That was horrible, wasn't it? I'm sorry guys, I swear I'll I'll never do that again. Let's uh let's just talk to these people. What do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. <laughs> Great. Well, part of the job, Doc. Marines are meant to fight. You just fix us up when we're done. I know how things work, Commander. She's not a I've piece. seen my share of combat, but it's foolish to go looking for trouble. You could both take a lesson from the captain. He's not afraid of combat, but he knows the value of restraint, too. Sorry, Doc, but this waiting's killing me. 
I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. You'll do fine, Jenkins. Uh, naturally, that's a lie. Um, it's just another mission, Jenkins. Do your job, follow my orders, and there won't be any problems. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coups. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Don't play the hero, Jenkins. That never works out well for you. Remember Warcraft? This mission isn't about personal glory, Corporal. We have a job to do. Don't do anything stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not gonna screw this up. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you, but let's just say he does screw up. Big time. Okay, so... Eden Prime. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But, when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. Why are we going there? Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's gotta be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. Be careful what you wish for, Jenkins. Because you might just get it. Alright. Nihilus. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. Sounds impressive. Alright, the Spectres. What do you know about the Spectres? Only what I've heard. Spectre agents work directly for the Citadel Council. They usually work alone or in small groups. Spectres don't have any official power, though. Basically, they're a shadow organization with a mandate to preserve and protect galactic stability. Protect it at any cost. Don't forget that part. Spectres operate above the law. Hmm. That's dangerous. How do you control agents with unlimited power? I suppose the Council could revoke the Spectre status of an agent who got out of hand. At that point, Citadel Security Services would take over. Those C-Sec grunts wouldn't stand a chance. The Spectres were 20 ordinary soldiers. The Spectres police themselves. An agent goes rogue, they send another agent to take him down. That's Spectre justice. The Corporal's confusing romantic legends with reality, Commander. <laughs> I always love that line. That Spectre Justice. Especially since it actually turns out to be true later on in the game. Alright, so... There are no human Spectres. Why don't we have any of our own people in there? Spectres usually come from the Council races. Like the Turians. We've been trying to get a human accepted into their ranks for years now. So far, it hasn't happened. Hey, Commander, you'd make a good Spectre. You're always getting dropped into impossible situations, forced to survive unbeatable odds. Just like you on a coos. Those are... bad memories, Jenkins. I try not to think about a coos. Sorry, Commander. I... I didn't mean to offend you. I... I respect what you did there. We all do. Let's not dwell on the past, Commander. Was there something else you needed? So, I guess that was pretty obvious foreshadowing there, of Shepard becoming a Spectre later on. It's not really a spoiler if it's that obvious, right? And also, they, they talked about a coos, which is a... It's the, um... 
Well, suffice it to say, it's that was the the horrible mission Shepard had to survive on the Soul Survivor origin. Like the the story changes depending on which you know on which of the three you chose. Like the the war hero took place on the world of Elysium, and the ruthless origin took place on Torfon. These are different worlds in the Mass Effect galaxy, and Akuz was the world in which Shepard had to survive on the Soul Survivor. So I'll explain what Akuz is later on. I mean, they, they if you want to, it's actually in the Codex entry, I believe. If, so, anyway, so, goodbye. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. You have anything else to say, Jenkins? Sir? Sir? Really, Jenkins? Sir? Wait, is that all you say? Sir? <laughs> Look at this. Sir? 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 <laughs> Sir? 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 I always love doing that when they just say the same thing over and over again. Uh, poor Jenkins, though. He doesn't deserve that kind of treatment. I should be more respectful towards him. And here is the galaxy map, which is... It's a key thing throughout the, throughout the entire trilogy. You... In all three games, you use this to go to all the different planets and other locations in the galaxy. Only the commanding officer may specify a destination for the Normandy. Shepard is not the commanding officer. At least, not yet. Anything over here? Nope. Alright, I've explored everything that's here, so let's move on. Uh, check these guys out. All these guys ever do in the entire game is they salute Shepard when he passes by. Look at this, they just keep doing it. Yeah, they just keep saluting Commander Shepard when he passes by. It's like their only purpose in life is to salute Commander Shepard. I'm not even sure if these guys are even real soldiers. They don't fight or anything. All they do is salute you. Alright guys, I want a hundred salutes from you per day. Now I'm just gonna go on and pretend that you're important, okay? Alright, see you around. Alright, let's talk to the badass Spectre guy here. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. Where's Captain Anderson? The captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. Mm. Shepard's a hardcore military guy. He doesn't care for fickle things like beauty all that much. So what? I'm a marine, not some tourist on vacation. It's more than just a tourist destination, isn't it, Shepard? Eden Prime is a symbol of your people. A perfect little world on the edges of your territory. Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? Is that a threat? Are you trying to scare me, Spectre? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. Really? Well, guess what? That's obvious. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. Hey, the nice sounding music disappeared. Oh, things must be serious. Uh... Why the secrecy? There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. 
Prothean? I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Why did we tell the Council? Why didn't we keep the beacon for ourselves? You humans don't have the best reputation. Some species see you as selfish, too unpredictable, too independent, even dangerous. Sharing that beacon will improve relations with the Council. Plus, we need their scientific expertise. They know more about the Protheans than we do. The beacon is not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. I should have known. Guess that explains why I bump into him every time I turn around. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live, a particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Cool. So, you put my name forward? Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. Does this mean I can get a badass piece of armor? Like you? Like you? Yeah, like glowing red dark armor that lights up in the dark. That'd be cool. Uh, anyway, you support this, Captain? I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. We'll see how well that goes. Alright. Eden Prime. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species, and after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. So basically, it's the perfect place for a horrible tragedy to occur then. Because that's... Come on guys, you know that's how it works. In every story, there's... You have this beautiful, wonderful place. Completely untouched by evil. And maybe some great discovery is about to be made there. And that's when everything goes to hell. Because those are the rules. It's just how it works, you know? It wouldn't be much of a game if we just went to the planet, picked something up, and then left. Okay, so... Protheans. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. So yeah, the Protheans are a very important race in the Mass Effect universe. The idea... The story is that they were once this, well, he just said it, they, they were this very powerful ancient race that ruled the entire galaxy thousands of years ago, and all of 
suddenly they disappeared for no discernible reason, and all of the technology they left behind is what has enabled all of the races of the galaxy to have space-age technology, including humanity, which discovered a like a data cache left by the Protheans on Mars. Unfortunately, though, things are not what they seem. The Protheans, let's just say there is a lot more to them than than they think. And uh, the beacon. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Wrong hands? Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliance ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Terminus systems? The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. Low-key, huh? Yeah, sure. That's how it's gonna go down. Uh-huh. You just keep telling yourself that. Well, I'm ready to go. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden- Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Really? Well, that did take very long, now did it? Get down! We are under attack, taking heavy casualties! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need... Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. It just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold of 38.5. Looks like a giant metal space hand. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Can't be serious. What's a small strike Tell team? Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Yeah, what's a small strike team going to do against a giant metal Cthulhu hand? Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. He can count on us. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. I don't need luck. I'm Commander Shepard. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. Now Jenkins, on the other hand, yeah, he is gonna be fuck. Whoa. Bye. This place got hit hard, Commander. Hostiles everywhere. Your guard up. Yeah. You too. Well, here we are.
Eden Prime. It's a place where it all began. Alright, I think this is a good place to end my first video, so thank you all for watching, and hopefully my commentary wasn't too unbearable, and I hope to see you all on the next episode. Thank you, and goodbye.